Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here, and I thought I would be able to take a day off. I thought I'd be able to take some vacation time as normally in the summer, it's a little bit quiet in the tech space, but Apple went ahead and decided to release some new products today, the new 2019 MacBook Air and the new entry-level 2019 MacBook Pro. So for this video, as we normally do, I wanted to go over what's new with the 2019 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro, and then maybe give some buying advice to people out there, especially some of the configurations and models I would recommend or when you should choose a MacBook Air over a MacBook Pro. And just a disclaimer, this is in no way a full review. It's basically a refresher of the products that come out and the configurations I would recommend to most people, especially impatient people watching this video, people who aren't going to wait for the full review to pre-order these products. I wanna at least give them some buying advice so they're not going in blind. So let's start with the easier of the two updates and that is the 2019 MacBook Air. And in terms of updates, this is a very minor update to the MacBook Air. So basically the MacBook Air is now getting the true tone display. The previous 2018 version didn't have that. And it's also getting a slight price cut. So now the MacBook Air is going to start at $1,099 or $999 if you are a college student. As for the True Tone display, this is a technology that I really like that's been on the iPhones, iPads, and some of the more recent MacBook Pros. What this technology does is basically change the color temperature of the screen based on the ambient lighting around you. So if you are in a warm room, the screen will look more warmly lit kind of acting almost like a physical piece of paper. I find this is really great, especially when you're reading on your laptop. The $100 price cut might not sound like the biggest deal in the world, but I think it is really important that Apple make a laptop that's slightly more affordable than their previous offerings. And now we're finally getting to a point where maybe next year the MacBook Air will start at $999. But again, if you are going off to school, if you can take advantage of that education pricing, you can get this MacBook Air for $999. Now there is another update to the 2019 MacBook Air that Apple didn't cover in this press release. And that is that it is getting the new keyboards that are found on the 2019 MacBook Pro. So previously with the 2018 MacBook Air, they had a third generation butterfly keyboard. Apple slightly revised that, changed the material in it to make it a little bit more reliable than the previous generations. Those laptops have only been out for about a month or two now. So we really don't know if Apple fixed the butterfly keyboard issue for good. Hopefully they have, we're gonna take them at their word for now, but if any issues do pop up, I'll be sure to update it on my channel. And again, these keyboards are still covered by Apple's repair program. Again, you can take that with a grain of salt. Either Apple is really confident in these keyboards, so if they do break, they'll fix them for free. Or if you don't take Apple at its word, maybe these keyboards aren't fully fixed. That's why they're on the repair program but hopefully it's the former. Hopefully Apple is just putting that repair program out there for people who are still worried about the reliability of the keyboard. So if they purchase one, if anything does go wrong, they don't have to worry about spending out of pocket to fix that issue. As for the CPU, it's still the same 1.6 gigahertz dual core option as the previous 2018 Air. Okay, now there's one more slight difference between the 2019 MacBook Air and the 2018 MacBook Air. The 2018 MacBook Air had storage options where you could go up to 1.5 terabytes and there was no one terabyte option. With the new 2019 MacBook Air, they got rid of the 1.5 terabyte option and allowed you to upgrade it to a one terabyte solid state drive. This makes a lot more sense in my opinion because the previous jump was from 512 gigabytes to 1.5 terabytes and that was a pretty big jump especially when you consider this is a more budget friendly model of the MacBook line. Speaking of storage, Apple cut the price almost in half for all of the SSD storage upgrades on the MacBook Air and across all other Mac lineups. So if you're buying a MacBook Pro, a MacBook Air, an iMac, an iMac Pro, or a Mac Mini, go check those storage options because Apple did cut the price quite a bit. Okay, so for people who are in the market for a MacBook Air, should you really go for that starting base model at $1,099? I'm gonna say no for most people, and here's why. It comes with a 128 gigabyte 
solid state drive. And honestly, that is a very small amount of storage for a modern day laptop. I would really recommend you bump that up to at least 256 gigabytes for an additional $200 unless you absolutely know that you only need 128 gigabytes of storage. If you're buying the air and you're only going to browse the web or stream Netflix or watch YouTube, that is probably the only case where you won't be needing additional storage. So if you know that you aren't going to be downloading any apps, storing any photos or videos, then you can probably squeak by with that 128 gigabytes of storage. However, for most people, I really recommend going with the 256 gigabyte option. If you need even more storage, you can add another 200 for the 512 gigabytes and then another $200 for the one terabyte option. Now, the only upgrade you can make to your 2019 MacBook Air is in the RAM department. So it comes with eight gigabytes as standard and you can spend an additional $200 to bump that up to 16 gigabytes. If you're a light user, I still think that eight gigabytes of RAM runs fine on Mac OS, especially with the fast solid state drives that are in these computers when it's switching over between virtual RAM and actual RAM it's really hard to notice that switch. But again, try and know what kind of workflows you're going into. If you're going to have a lot of browser tabs open, especially if you're using Chrome, if you're doing any sort of photo or video editing, if you just like to have a lot of applications open at once and you want the most absolute speed possible and you don't wanna be refreshing or closing apps constantly, then go and bump that up to the 16 gigabyte option. Okay, let's talk about the bigger update for today and that comes in the new entry-level 2019 Mac MacBook Pro. So Apple has completely gotten rid of the escape key MacBook Pro and now the touch bar comes standard on all models starting at $1,299. Honestly, this was a pretty big surprise for me because if I was reading the tea leaves, I would think that Apple was more inclined to be getting rid of the touch bar in the future, but it looks like they're doubling down on that technology and they're bringing it across all of the MacBook Pros now. So any MacBook Pro that you buy is going to have a touch bar on it. As for the processor, we're getting a new 1.4 gigahertz quad core eighth generation CPU with turbo boost up to 3.9 gigahertz. For $300 more, you can bump that up to an i7 processor with 1.7 gigahertz and turbo boost up to 4.5 gigahertz. On paper, this seems like a pretty good upgrade to the entry level MacBook Pro, which hasn't been updated since 2017. And that came standard with a dual core processor. So now the entry level MacBook Pro comes standard with a quad core processor. Of course, like the MacBook Air, this is also coming with the new revised butterfly keyboard. Again, this product starts at $1,299, and if you wanna bump up all the specs on it, you can max it out at $2,799. Like the 2019 Air, the 2019 Pro also comes standard with 128 gigabytes of storage. Again, I really gotta stress here that you probably shouldn't be getting 128 gigabytes on a pro machine. This is usually for people who are going to be editing photos or videos, uh, downloading a lot of different third-party applications, just anything that's going to require larger file size, more files, is something that someone on a MacBook Pro is probably going to be doing over maybe someone on an Air. So again, same advice here, don't go for that 120 gigabyte option, at least spend the additional $200 for the 256 gigabyte option. And you may wanna even bump that up to 512 gigabytes depending on your needs. However, unlike the MacBook Air, you can bump this storage all the way up to two terabytes. And if you're going from 128 to two terabytes, it's an additional $1,000. Unlike the Air, we also get CPU options. So with the standard CPU, you are getting a quad core option. Although the base clock speed at 1.4 gigahertz is a little bit low. So I'm very interested to actually get my hands on this version of the MacBook Pro and see just how well that processor performs. But I really can't give you a definitive answer if you should upgrade from the i5 to the i7. However, traditionally, if you need more processing power, if you're doing anything like photo editing, video editing, or even if you're doing some sort of development with coding, getting a better processor is usually going to be better for you. As for the RAM, we're in the same boat as the 2019 MacBook Air. We only get an eight gigabyte or a 16 gigabyte option with the credit that this is a MacBook Pro. So the people that are buying this computer are more likely to be doing pro sumer or pro level tasks. So if you know you're gonna be doing heavy video editing, photo editing, or just things that require a lot more RAM than eight gigabytes, 
go ahead and bump that up to 16 gigabytes. But again, if you're just kind of buying this for more basic stuff, maybe you wanted a little more horsepower than the MacBook Air, eight gigabytes should be fine as long as you don't plan on having a lot of applications open at once. So at this point, you're probably wondering, should I get a MacBook Air or a MacBook Pro? They're only $200 apart in price. And I think that answer is actually pretty simple in Apple's laptop lineup. If you're an everyday person and want a solid laptop with a slightly lower weight, fans that aren't as loud, a body that doesn't get as hot, better battery life by around two hours, if you're using it for school mainly to take notes, write papers, do research, browse the web, write an email, or watch YouTube videos, the MacBook Air is going to be fine for most people out there. In fact, I know a lot of tech people out there review the laptops based on raw processing power before, but I don't think most people would really notice the increase from the MacBook Air to the MacBook Pro. And if you do notice, you know that you need a laptop that's going to be suited for those workflows. However, I do think that people will appreciate that cooler body, fans that don't get as loud. And again, an extra two hours of battery life in some cases might be more beneficial to you than extra processing power. Conversely, if you need that processing power, you should be looking towards the MacBook Pro lineup. If you wanna do more pro or prosumer tasks like coding, photo editing, video editing, or music production, you need to look at a MacBook Pro. And you might even need to look at the higher end options like the $1,799 13 inch MacBook Pro or that 15 inch MacBook Pro with a discrete graphics card. But I'll save my final opinions for when I get these products for review. So hopefully this video helped you out. However, I ultimately recommend that you do wait for the full review of the 2019 MacBook Air and the 2019 MacBook Pro, which I will be getting before you make your purchasing decision. So if you like the video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, including those future reviews, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.